Savior be Jesus Christ. The Savior and the Redeemer of all mankind. Blessed be the Holy Spirit. The enabler and sustainer of those who seek for grace. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Hortense for burial. Our sister was washed in the holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit in confirmation. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he'll raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. Please sit. We'll have a tribute that's set out on the order of service by the Honorable Custos of Clarendon, the Anglican Mothers Union, St. James Church, Stolgate, and from the family, and afterwards a an eulogy by Mr. Alwyn G. Brown. Done in that order, and we'll now ask the Honorable Custer to come forward. condolences to a bereaved family of Mrs. Horton Gordon. Today we join with you to celebrate the life and work of Mrs. Gordon and to pay tribute to her for the dedicated and noble service she gave in her capacity as a justice of the peace, the late ministry and educator. Mrs. Gordon had a passion for her duties as a justice of the peace and lay magistrate and an unwavering desire to assist ordinary citizens in securing justice. You could always rely on her to make herself available to serve the community members and advocate at the lay magistrate's court. A dedicated and committed individual who upheld the principles of the Office of Justice of the Peace. Mrs. Gordon displayed an answering loyalty. Her service to the communities of Tollgate and Algren Store, and by extension the parish of Clarendon, was exemplary. She was known for going the extra mile to assist persons, but not at the expense of compromising her values and the standards of the Office of Justice of the Peace. She made an invaluable contribution to the parish reading an essay competition from its inception as an outreach project implementation by the Office of the Custard and the Lay Magistrate Association, Clarendon Chapter. Many students benefited educationally, financially, and socially from this activity. Her involvement in the activities at the Four Pass Zone was noteworthy. Mrs. Gordon's contribution to education in her role as a classroom teacher and as principal of the Alban School Primary and Junior High School was superb. Though through her vision, leadership and service, she positively transformed countless individuals' lives. Many now occupy positions of responsibility locally and overseas. She discharged her duties and function fearlessly, but this was tempered with humility, decorum, professionalism, and a deep sense of purpose, and a good smile. These qualities endeared her to others, and many sought to emulate her. Mrs. God was loving, kind, sympathetic, and a good listener, who made a meaningful contribution at meeting. She was a community-oriented and a good team player. 
in recognition of her stellar contribution to her community and fraternity of justice of the thief, she was awarded by the Climate Chapter of the Emancipation Association. It was a pleasure to have worked and associated with this fine lady. Her contribution to the start of justice will always be remembered and treasured. The fraternity of justice of the peace will miss Mrs. God, but we give thanks for the many years God afforded her the privilege of serving her community and by extension the justice system. Her strength of character and of indomitable spirit will never be extinguished from our minds. Mrs. Houghton's God, a justice of the peace and educator, extraordinary, has left us, left us with memories of the good she did and the love she gave and the dream she kept alive. Indeed, it is said that neither fire nor wind, bird nor death can erase our good deed. Her good deed will never, never be erased. May her soul rest in peace and may light perpetual shine upon her. Program 
was admirable, and Clarendon Deanley was one of the deanmates that quickly demonstrated their interest by implementing the Mother's Union Parenting Program, and being present at the inaugural service at which the late Right Reverend Alfred Reed presided. It was during Ortense's tenure as a regional president that the All Island Mothers Union annual general meeting was held at the King Kendall Conference Center in Mandeville, for which there was much commendation. She never spared herself to give up her time, talent, and resources to the Mothers Union. As a leader at the different levels of the organization, she instilled in the members the value of marriage and family life and the care and protection of children. So passionate was her concern and love for children that she emphasized the benefit of the cradle role, receives babies and children being guided in their spiritual growth and development. Those persons who have worked closely with Mrs. Gordon recall her excellent interpersonal skills, which enabled her to establish a strong personal and professional relationship. She could relate with any category of persons. She was a good team player, but also had independent ideas and was not afraid to quietly and graciously defend these ideas while respecting the opinions of others. And she would modify her own views if she was convinced by logical and reasonable arguments that she was wrong. Her strong Christian values coupled with good manners, discipline, honesty, respect, and integrity were of paramount importance to her service in the Mother's Union. Mrs. Gordon was a recipient of several awards at various levels of society, among them an award for her, her outstanding service to the Mother's Union, and of course the Governor General's Award for Outstanding Achievement. The members of the Mother's Union in the Diocese of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands are grateful for her many years of dedicated service to the church and community. We also, on behalf of the worldwide president, Sharon Harper, express sincere condolences to the family. Yet we rejoice with you, family members, as we celebrate a life well lived in service of others. Our sister has run her way well. Let her life and legacy be an example for all of us. Ortiz Gordon, Sister Ortiz, Mrs. Gordon, will be remembered for a quiet dignity, faithfulness, and presence. We will remember her not for how long her life was, but for how rich it was. We now commit our Sister Ortiz Gordon to God's gracious keeping as her soul rests in peace. May eternal life shine upon her. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I extend condolences to the family on behalf of the St. James Anglican Church, blessed with an indomitable spirit, underpinned and anchored in the Christian faith. Her ethical, or her ethical principles and practices were never in question. One with a fighting spirit and a kind heart. A woman extraordinary. Mrs. H. V. Gordon, affectionately known to us as Mrs. G. This powerful woman of talent has been associated with the St. James Anglican Church for approximately 60 years. Someone with whom I have been acquainted from childhood and who happens to be my godmother. One who has corrected many and helped to mold the lives of many children who have matured into adults at this very church. Though conceived to be a strict disciplinarian, she endeared them to her Sunday school class. We better not return to Sunday school after a week, 
and not know that men reverse. She never commanded, but demanded the respect of everyone, whether young or old. Mrs. G was the church, and the church was Mrs. G. She dedicated her life to this church in every way possible. At the time of her passing, she served as lay reader and the only chalice bearer in the poorest cure of churches to which we belong. As a lay reader commissioned in the 1980s, she traveled the cure St. Stephen's Chantilly, Holy Trinity St. Tunis, St. Andrew Harmon's, St. Augustine's Taurus, and right here at Tony Gates, doing services. Some persons present today may not, have, may not have heard her preach, but I tell you, that voice made a difference. COVID-19 restricted her, but she got a chance on Good Friday of this year. It was announced that service would be held at St. Augustine, but Mrs. G would have none of that. She insisted that St. James should have their own service. And for the last time, she preached from this very lectern where I'm standing today. It was a joy to listen to that beautiful voice that we all fell in love with. Singing was not her thing, as she claimed she could not sing. But she would track every favorite song, her favorite songs from the crusade to get the congregation singing. And I tell you, most of those songs were in the hymn book, but she decided to use crusade. So she would track the words from the crusade. It was always her desire for other persons to join the lay reader's ministry. As she often said, she had two gowns waiting at home because she's old and tender now. St. James people, get ready, the gowns are coming. As she visited the different places, she gained the love and admiration of members and friends associated with the churches, but she had a special bond with St. Thomas. Just recently, she learned of the diminishing numbers in the congregation. And she said to me, I'm thinking that maybe I could go there once every two months or so to help if I would take her. To which I responded, are you sure you can manage that? She replied, it is not often, but that was not to be. That was the passion she had for the church. Mrs. Gordon was a strong believer in prayer because she knew that prayer changes things. And so she insisted that weekly prayer meetings were held, even if it was a five old focus, according to her. The dreaded COVID put a halt to those weekly sessions, and to date, it has not restarted, as persons have the option to listen online. Friends, her commitment to building the church family was unquestionable. And she prepared, as she prepared and presented many persons for confirmation, the last two persons being in 2021. Mother's union was her baby, as you would have heard, as she founded this group here in 1980. And if she had her way, every mother in this church would be a member of the Mother's Union. She, present, she represented the church at the annual synod for over five years and served as rector's warden to Reverend Eric Stevens for the period he served here at St. James. This gave her the opportunity to ensure that he was well cared for while being here. Whether she was a warden or not, she thought the priest should be happy and comfortable. When she was not hosting, she was accompanying them on visits to the sea, sometimes being the driver. And I'm sure Canon Daniel, who's sitting up here, can attest to that, as she often speaks of Mrs. Gordon's sincerity and dedication. Every priest that was assigned to this church was attached to Mrs. G. Her respect and kindness to them was immeasurable. She opened the doors of her home to every 
every single one of them, even those who traveled by, would stop to refresh themselves and rest a while. Mrs. Gordon held the purse string of this church from the early 1980s until 2015, an excellent treasurer. Under her management, this church was never in debt. Her records were always detailed and accurate. Our church assessment was always paid with a credit balance to cushion us for the first quarter of the following year. But in 2015, she decided to give up that position, but remained the assistant treasurer until January of this year, while still serving on the church committee. She headed many successful fundraising over the years, including the Harvest Suppers and the Talent in Gallery. Mrs. Gordon took it as her duty to prepare all the limbs you see here for Sunday services, and you see the colors are well maintained. Let me tell you something, friends. Mrs. Gordon was the epitome of grace and dignity. Someone who was passionate about the work of the Lord. Punctuality was her whole life. She must never be late for church. And being here at 7.15 for a 7.30 service is late for her. You had to be on time to pick her up. And if you weren't on time, you would meet her at the gate, standing with Miss Faye beside her. Or she's sitting on the driveway with Miss Faye standing beside her with the bags waiting. She loved her church, and we loved her. As a church, while we could not repay her for all the contributions, we were happy to recognize her in 2017 by presenting her a plaque for outstanding service, which sits proudly on the mantle in her living room. What a woman. What a shoes to fill. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very sad day for St. James. We have lost a stalwart. We have lost a mother. We have lost a friend. She has left an indelible mark in the church and in our hearts. I don't know when we will stop calling her name. On a Sunday morning, you will see her step right up here to receive the offering plates. So every time that comes around, we will always, if at no other time, remember her. She remains a legend in our time. I mean, members of the family, we mourn with you today. But guess what? We are believers. And Isaiah 41 verse 13 reminds us, I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of you, of your right hand, and says to you, do not fear, for I myself will help you. Let us hold on to that faith. With the words penned by Ruth Burgess, into the freedom of wind and sunshine, we let you go. Into the dance of the stars and planets, we let you go. Into the wind's breath and the hands of the star maker, we let you go. We love you. We miss you, Miss G. We want you to be happy. Go safely. Go dancing. Go running home. Rest in peace, Miss G. tribute to the late Hortense B. Gordon. Good afternoon, church. 
And good afternoon to all the family, members, friends, and well wishers in virtual space. On behalf of my immediate family and the Lodge family, we want to extend condolences to our cousin, Alain, and his children and all the other family members. Also, we are extending condolences on behalf of aunties, nephews, nieces, cousins living in the U.S. and Canada for an un unavoidable absence this afternoon. Helen Keller said, what we once enjoyed and deeply loved, we can never lose. For all that we love deeply becomes a part of us. This afternoon, my sister and I are standing here on behalf of all the nieces, nephews, cousins, and a plethora of friends and relatives who have become members of our family to offer tribute to our dear aunt, Hortense Valerie Gordon, whom as children we call Aunt Haughty, Aunt Haughty, and as we grow into adulthood, we say Auntie or Miss G. It is Ernest Hemingway who says, every man's life ends the same way. It is only the details of how he lived and how he died that distinguish one man from another. Against that background, we will share with you some aspects of our aunt's life which had a profound impact on the lives of a number of our family members and friends. Miss G played many roles in the family. She was not only a mother to Alwyn, her only son, but she also played a mothering role to her sister Myrtle's children. After Aunt Myrtle's untimely death, Auntie went to live with Myrtle's children and their dad to provide support to the family during that very difficult period. She nurtured them and helped them to skillfully navigate life challenges from children to adults. Judith, one of Aunt Myrtle's daughter, said Auntie was her aunt and mother who showed no partiality between Alwyn, her son, and her. Judith indicated that Auntie cared for her daily needs and molded her into the person whom she is today and for which she is extremely grateful. Janet, another niece, expressed her profound gratitude to Auntie, who was not only her guardian while she attended Glenmuir High School, but also she played a pivotal role in her educational pursuits. These are just a few of the many examples of Miss G's love for her family. Auntie, the family person. Marcia, one of her nieces, said, Auntie was the nucleus of our family, the magnet that pulls each branch of the family tree together. Dorothy, another niece, says she was instrumental not only in planning funerals, but also in baking wedding cakes. She would not only provide advice but also made an enormous contribution. She was always in attendance at family functions. She would always invite family members to share in celebrations, making many, marking many of her achievements. Her home was always welcoming, and we generally stop, whether going from St. Elizabeth to Kingston or coming from Kingston to St. Elizabeth. 
She always had something to send for her relative in St. Elizabeth, be it a package or a letter. When we stopped by, know that it would be a long chat with Auntie. Auntie was always concerned about her older sister, Aunt Esme, whom is un unavailable, unable sorry, to be here today because of health reasons. Among the many gifts and packages that were, men that were mentioned before for St. Elizabeth, be sure there was one for Aunt Esme. Nadine, another cousin, who developed a close relationship with her over the last two years, indicated that they would talk on the phone almost every day. She indicated that Auntie enjoyed a healthy conversation. Miss G made each family member feel special when they were in her presence. Auntie was one of the role models in our family for a number of reasons. She was a trendsetter, the first member of the family to receive a tertiary education. As children, we were very proud when we saw our aunt's photograph. Among the photographs of the high achievers of our primary school at Bogue in St. Elizabeth, this became one of the stimuli that motivated many of us to strive for excellence. Auntie displayed several positive qualities that many of us have emulated. These qualities include her strong love for her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, her exemplary work ethic, her service to community, her punctuality, and her generous spirit. Miss G was a mentor and a motivator who encouraged us to be our best self. Neville, one of the oldest nephews, remember Auntie as a probation teacher at Mount Osborne School, who was bright, beautiful, dynamic, principled, and a dedicated teacher who expected the best from her students. He recalled that Auntie became his mentor, who encouraged and helped him with his educational goals through the Jamaica local exams and beyond. She got him involved in 4-H clubs, which paved the way for him to represent Jamaica in cattle judging at the Royal Agriculture Show in England in 1959. Never indicated that he will always be indebted to her for her advice and guidance. Donald, another nephew, indicated that Auntie had inspired him to pursue all he, had, he has achieved academically because she taught him from an early age of the value of having an education. Auntie's mentoring went beyond her family as she has touched so many lives in a positive way. Auntie, the leader and matriarch. Although Auntie was the last child of her parents, she had the knack of taking charge of situations and was the natural leader among her siblings. She was confident, she was no nonsense, and whatever task was given to her, it was executed expertly. She was one who was never satisfied with mediocre service. With her ability to lead and her engaging personality, she became the family matriarch who was respected for the authority she commanded. Miss G was the consummate educator. Her mission was to mold and shape young minds, to be the very best for them, to serve at every level within the society. Her firm, stern, and disciplined manner are long remembered by us, her family, and the many children who are now adults and who have come to the realization that as a teacher, she saw their potential and wanted them to succeed. Ms. G understood 
that to serve one's community and country is one of the highest service we can do. As a justice of the peace, she understood only too well that her community depended on her wisdom and strong sense of justice. She wore many hats and she carried out each role effectively, whether she was a lay preacher, a pacifier, a confidant, a caregiver, or an organizer. She was an inspiration to anyone who met her, whether they knew her for an hour or a lifetime. Yvonne, a cousin, indicated that Miss G was a lady of style and grace, and she will treasure the jokes, the laughter, and the good times they shared. She was indeed a phenomenal woman, filled with poise. In honoring the memory of Hortense Valerie Gordon, let us say something, things that are admirable from her. Her abiding Christian faith and modeling of love for her Lord Jesus Christ. Her pursuit of excellence, her connection with family and friends, her integrity and stand for principles, and her ability to talk with crowds and keep her virtue, to walk with kings and not lose the common touch. Maya Angelou words, if you're going to live, leave a legacy. Make a mark on the world that can't be erased. Aptly describes Auntie's sojourn. As we close, may we use this verse from Isaiah 41 verse 10 to comfort us the family. It says, So do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you. And to help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As we bid farewell to our beloved aunt, let us all hold on to the joy and the love we shared with her. Miss G, may the roads rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm your face. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Rest in eternal peace, Auntie. You, you have, have run the race of life with class and distinction. Sleep on. Take your rest. Thank you. Of my, one of my favorite managers at EOJ, at EOJ said to me, you're going to be all right, director. And I thought I said, yes, I thought I would be all right. Only to realize that today, I'm not so all right. But if I in other discretion, Father, I would have said to you, I need more time, I'll give you the instruction. <laughs> but I am guided by your instruction now. Um, if I pause just to shed a tear, or just to cry, just bear with me. Because I'm reminded of the shortest passage in the Bible where Jesus wept. And therefore, if I do pause, Please bear with me. Because I have to do this for my mother. It is the most painful thing I have ever done and I think I will ever do. I must do it because of the bond that exists between my mother and me. It is a bond that was born out of a mother's love for her son. And her son doing what the Bible says in Exodus 12. Honor your mother and your father along with the love and respect I have for my mother. I reminded us, Timothy, 2 Timothy 4 verse 7, I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race, 
have kept the faith. Using the words, those words, I could not allow anybody else to do this. I have to do it for my mother. I'm reminding you of the word John Oriam says, For death beginning with life, first breath of the life begins at the touch of death. Happy to remind that death is the ultimate in inevitable. On Sunday, July 3rd, 2022, at 2.30 a.m. in the morning, a page in the book of the life was closed with the passing of my dear mother, Hortense Valerie Gordon, Miss G. Auntie, mother, grandmother, as we say final goodbye, we have lost a loved one. The fact that physical life is not only final destination. My mother is leaving us for a life eternal and we are consoled by the fact that a loving God knows this. As we mourn, we see this as a Thanksgiving day for a life well spent and a life well lived. In the community of Bog, St. Elizabeth, a beautiful baby girl, my mother was born to Wilfred and Sarah 87 years ago on the 24th of July, June 1935. She was the last of five children with three predeceased in her. My mother, as was said earlier on, was a spark, bright spark of the family. Then after being successful at what was known at the time, third year, the pinnacle of school exams in those days, she went on to St. Joseph Teachers College. After completing Teachers College, my mother started her sojourn as a teacher at the Tollgate Audit School. After a tragedy in the family she, with the murder of her sister in 1967, she returned briefly to St. Elizabeth to assume the role of motherly guidance to her sister's children. After, however, though, my mother returned to Tollgate. My mother was not only occupied with teaching at Tollgate, but she was swept off her feet by a great gentleman, Mr. George Gordon, who became her husband in 1969. On the other side, my mother, Mr. Gordon, was smitten by the beautiful damsel from St. Elizabeth. And they were married for 42 years until the passing of her, Mr. Gordon 11 years ago. The, mother, the marriage cemented my mother's day in Clarendon. In 1969, she started teaching at the Osborne Store Audience School. And in 1974, she was appointed as the second principal for Osborne Store Audience School. For a period of almost four decades, Osborne Store was graced with the presence of my mother. In talking to a group of teachers who work with her, you could get the warm emanating fully from them as they spoke about my mother. They referred to her as mama, and the young teachers who say, Miss G, our prince. My mother was seen to those who work with her as a great, to have great leadership quality. She led from the front, not from the back based on her Christian principles. She had to be in, my, in the pickle of things, whatever she was involved in. She was a no-nonsense woman. Everything had to be done orderly. At school, her favorite, favorite hymn was, we build our school on the O Lord. And my mother knew what she wanted. Under God, she achieved it. She recognized that only excellent achievement was good enough for her. And this was aptly affected in the motto that she coined for husbands to her all in school, only the best is good enough. My mother had a passion for hard work, consensus building, camaraderie and togetherness. She gave hope to the hopeless and insight to the foolish. As a teacher more so at husband's torch, always be, be, so be, she grace because of her legacy and grace and dignity. dignity. She engraved the name and love in the heart of those who encountered with her and will not be easily erased by time or space. My mother, visionary acumen, sir, proficiency, teacher, teaching skill, charisma, and leadership 
kept her school on top. Osborne store in those days in use in Jamaican paradise run things then. Remember of the achievement of the common, ex common entrance exam and the technical entrance and the grade 9 achievement exams that they were known then spoke about the volume of my mother's leadership at the school. It was said that whenever your children fail at a part in school and you want them to pass the exam, just send them to Miss Garden. I remember when the results were published, one could not forget how proud she was. More so in one particular year, her school got the government scholarship. There was one year where somebody remarked to my mother, Miss G, I was counting the number of passes in the technical exam, exams. And when we reached 70, I have a stop at Casino Count. Her school then in that year got 77 passes to Bear Tech in that particular year. In fact, husband's tour, all his school after a while became to be known as Miss God's school. In the days when discipline was critical in the school environment, my mother was and still remembered for her loving and caring left hand. It had a positive impact on her many students, including myself. When I was in grade five and I was about to go to grade six to take common entrance class, I was coming into class. Eh? I said, yes, man, I'm going into my mother's class. If everything would be nice. Only to, to be treated the same way how she treated everybody else. And I fed the left hand. And so my mother was passionate about her work. My mother speaks in glowing terms of her student. The joy she gets from telling how many doctors, lawyers, teachers, businessmen, civil servants, etc., etc., who came under her guidance. She was a passionate soul. My mother was involved in the 4 H movement. She served the 4 H on the board of the advisory council, so the chairman of the advisory council. The 4 H as a tribute to her, and I quote. She was the wing beneath the wings of the staff that helped them to pass the aid, winning awards of, for the school and the most time winning the overall championship trophy, trophy. My mother had a love for Clonal Clare Arts and her inventiveness to go all over the country showcasing a wide variety of tastefulness and a unique arch dishes claimed with many gold medals. I tell you, when it comes to baking nice and good Christmas cake, that was my mother. That was my favorite. I remember still the rice and peas on a Sunday still tasting in my mouth. <laughs> Family support was critical to my mother. The love and the care towards every member of her family provided a sense of belonging, making each person in her family feeling important, valued respected as guided by her Christian principles and beliefs to affect her. She found time for everyone. She made every member of her family special. Whenever you were in her presence, you were the only individual, individual that mattered then. She shared every pain, every joy, and every celebration of every family member. My mother was a devoted Christian. It was her dedication to her God that at times I draw my own strength. She always remarked every Sunday morning, no matter how old I was, you're going to church today. I remember regularly between 5 and 6 a.m. I would hear my mother having her morning devotion. Remember, whenever I departed from the premises back into Kingston, she would remark, drive carefully, son. On the road, I remember, we serve a loving and merciful God. Amen. My mother was not afraid to speak of her faith and her commitment to her God. My mother always played her role, also played a role in the electoral system. She was and she served commissioner. I have to talk about my commissioner here from the electoral commissioner of Jamaica, Commissioner Skepri. 
She played the role of a sister returning officer of Clarendon Southwestern in the 1918, that term election. No wonder when I ascended to the role, Father, she was overjoyed. She served as a justice of the peace for several years. She sat on several organization committees for work. And for her work, my mother was awarded several allocates. She became justice of the peace, and I just, I, I liked a few. In 2006, she was awarded the Prime Minister Medal of Appreciation. And more importantly, in 2005, my mother was awarded the National Award of Honor of Distinction. Losing my mother, our aunt, Aunt Hortense, Grandma, sister, fellow Justice of the Peace, Mother's Union member and friend, remind us that death is life's final tragedy. The great equalizer, the ever reminder of mortality. And today we must relive hurting emptiness and it hurts. This final goodbye, what Paul reminds us in Philippians 1.21, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Ms. Jean departed this earth on July 3rd, 2022, starting her journey into the new Jerusalem. Little did I know that when Moya and I left the village of her on that fourth final day, at 7 o'clock when we left her at 7.15 p.m., little did I know that at 2.30 I would get a call in the morning from the 28th wing saying that we have lost her. She left more, her only one picnic. And her two grandsons, Mark and Kirk Andrew, her many relatives and friends, and her many colleagues. Goodbye, my mother. You've left the legacy of touched so many appreciative life. Your blessed human being. Rest in peace, rock away in Abraham's arm. As you enter into that new city, that new city, that new Jerusalem, may your memory forever live on. May your soul rest in peace and the light perpetually shine upon you, my mother. Amen. Last night I lay asleep in There came a dream so fair I stood in old Jerusalem Beside the temple there I heard the children singing And ever as they sang I thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer I found the voice of angels in heaven in answer
Almighty God, remember before you today your servant Hortense. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you'll receive her more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I will start off by saying, you know, being the son of my father, I've been graced enough to inherit several attributes. However, public speaking has not been one of them. Nevertheless, I'll do my best. Uh, today I will be speaking on the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Amen. Oh, For the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the universe they are seen to die, and their departure is taken for misery. And they are going from us to utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For prayer, for God proved them and found them worthy for Himself. That they put that they put their trust in Him. So that they put their trust in Him shall understand the truth. And such as faithful in love shall abide with him for me. For grace and mercy is to his sins, and he and he hath care for his elect. This is the word of the Lord.
is from Revelation chapter 21, reading from verse 1 through to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Would you all please stand in your body? If you can. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he hates the hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of my fold, I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice. Fear that so there shall be no flock, one shepherd. Be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord.
expressing condolence to the members of the immediate family, to the church family, to the school family, to the Mother's Union family, to the JP family, and I'm not going to call it more families, but to the host of others who feel a deep sense of loss at the passing of our beloved church sister, Hortens. Ash Bishop Gregory, who is away in England at this time attending the Lambeth Conference, had already the opportunity to express his condolence. He called me at a time when arrangements were being made for the funeral service to certify that I would be able to participate in this funeral service so I can regard myself as representing the wider diocesan family. The widow of Bishop Murray, Mrs. Jean Murray, asked me to express her regret that she could not be here to share the service. In a similar way, Archdeacon Cunningham asked me to extend his sympathy and re regret that his wife, Elaine, and himself could not be here as he has another funeral at the same time in Kingston. I am pleased that my wife, Canon Judith, who served in this cure for, the, for at least 10 years as rector, is present along with my son Richard who takes his seat beside me wherever I go, be it cathedral or wherever. I acknowledge the absence of Reverend Danvers who has 
another service, who serves in this cure, who has another service, another engagement at this time. But I'm grateful to the Archdeacon and to the other members of the clergy who are here, local or Baptist friend from here, and uh, of course, Sister Beverly grew up in this in this area and this church, and uh, we are grateful that they are able to come along. Of course, let me not leave out one name, Mr. Bracket, in case I get um, in pitch for calling all of the names and leaving one out. Always a dangerous thing to call names. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we have the privilege today to join in the celebration of the life of our sister Hortense. We pray as we turn now to your words that your word may be proclaimed, that your word may be heard, that your word may be believed, that your word may be obeyed, and that your name may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, those who know me long enough know the somewhat unorthodox method of my funeral sermon and preaching. That sometimes I say I don't preach funeral sermons, I preach sermons. And today, we are in the octave. Uh, let me use another word. We are in the festival of St. James the Great. And this church is St. James Church Tolgate. And on the normal custom, St. James Day, of course, was on the um, 25th. But on the normal Anglican church practice, the patronal festival is celebrated on the Sunday that falls within those eight days. I mentioned the word octave, let me change. Within the eight days of St. James Day. And so tomorrow would have been a great patronal festival here at St. James Tollgate. And I think it's most appropriate that as we say farewell to our sister who has been in this area for over 40 years that I say I share with you some important elements of that St. James Festival. Let me begin first with an identification. Of course, you know the word James occurs several times in the New Testament. And there are three significant James that we have. James the Great, and you know him. He is the brother of John. John and James, sons of Zebedee. There's another James, and I've only come across one church in all my journeys through the years. That is called St. James the Less, <laughs> because this is St. James the Great. And so there is St. James the Less, who is James, the son of Alphaeus, one of the apostles of Jesus. And of course, there's the other well-known, well-established James in the New Testament, James, St. James of Jerusalem, who is also named, sometimes named James, the brother of Jesus, um, and who was chair of the church in Jerusalem after his conversion for some time. As we bring that into the picture today, the first thing we remember about James, and which is important in this context, is his call to be a disciple of Jesus. Jesus called disciples to himself to follow him 
and to be his agents in the world and the proclaimers of his gospel message throughout the universe. And we remember James and John, sons of Zebedee, being called by Jesus to follow. And as I say these things, I want to reflect on, on where we are because in fact, as we look at James, we're looking at the Christian pilgrimage. And so his pilgrimage began with his call to discipleship. When he left his father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and set out to follow, to follow Jesus. Then there are certain features that I cannot speak about James without mentioning them. And this is his clear closeness, closeness to Jesus. He was one of the inner circle that shared with Jesus some very special moments. I suppose in another setting I could ask you what were some of those moments and you, if you were in um, Hortense, his class, he said, me teacher. He was there when the daughter of Jairus was raised. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John when he went there and brought back the daughter of the ru ruler of the synagogue to life. James was there. He was part of that experience. Then another significant occasion is that he was also there when Jesus was transfigured before these three disciples on the mount together with Moses and Elijah. They said the law and the prophets were there. And James was present in that experience to see the transfigured Christ in all his glory. And we have to understand that these experiences helped to form the person who James himself became. And if those two were good experiences, there was another one in which James was involved. And I'm asking you to think in the meantime, if you can just come up with the answer, but I'm not waiting on you. He was there too in the Garden of Gethsemane. So on these three special moments in the life of Jesus, when he gathered a small group of disciples with him, James was there among them. But this is not all about James that I wish to share with you. Because in James' life, there were two very significant teaching moments. One was the occasion recorded, I think, in it's a loose gospel. When Jesus was making his final journey to Jerusalem, set his face toward Jerusalem, taking his disciples with him. And it said that as he was going to Jerusalem, he was sending some people up to prepare a little space, a little place to welcome them in the, in the town. And uh, the person, when the persons heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, they refused to accept it. And it says that James and his brother John became enraged. And they asked Jesus if he wanted them to call down fire from heaven on that time. 
Jesus had the opportunity to rebuke them and to remind them that his mission was a mission of love. You know, you can do, you can do, you can be very active and do many things in the church and in, in the community. But if you do it without love, it is worth nothing. And one of the ways in which you understand um, where people have reached in their spiritual journey is the love that they show. Paul himself, when called to explain why he was doing so many things in the face of so great opposition, he simply said this, the love of Christ urges, urges me on. Motivated by the love of Christ is what gave him the capacity to do those things. So one of those great teaching moments was teaching that mission and ministry is about love. I remember a chorus, I learned a little verse in the chorus I learned many years ago as a young evangelist. He says, out in the darkness, shadowed by sin, souls are in bondage, souls we would win. How can we win them? How show the way? And the simple answer he gave was, love never fails. Love is the way. Then there was another great teaching moment. And don't get nervous, I'm not going to be here all day. I am known to have short sermons. So I'm nearly done. So uh, <laughs> There was another great teaching moment in the life of James the Great. And this, it is alleged, or it is, it is written in Luke's Gospel, that the mother of Jesus, of, of James and John, came to Jesus and said, Lord, I want you, when you come into your kingdom, that you put James on your right hand. No, no. That James and John put one on the right, one on the left. I don't think she named who put the right hand or who's left hand. But have one on the right and one on the left. That was her request. Interestingly enough, when in Luke's Gospel you read about the answer that Jesus gave, he didn't answer James and, I mean, the mother of them. He answered them directly. And he says, listen, you don't know, you don't know what you're asking. You don't know what you're asking. And so he said, can you drink? Can you drink of the cup that I'm going to drink of? And of course, they answered boldly as they are wont to do on occasions like this. They say, we are able. But you see, the cup that Jesus was talking about was a cup of suffering, a cup of sorrow. They said, we are able. But Jesus went on to teach them one of the great lessons on the Christian pilgrimage. The great ambition led to a lesson about true greatness. And true greatness is found in servanthood. Jesus said the kings of the world, the people in the world, they exercise authority and throw their weight around and say, who is boss? And whatever else when they're doing things. I mean, we run things, things don't run away. You know, as, as the case is, but he says, it shall not be like this among you. For the one who is the greatest of all must be the servant of all. Even 
as the Son of Man came. Not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So true greatness is not in the show of power and might and whatever else that you have. True greatness is shown in loving and humble service. Then the story of James ends rather abruptly. In the Acts of the Apostles we read that there was a time when Herod thought that he would show his favor towards the Jewish leadership and those who opposed the fledgling church. And the first thing he did was he put the brother, he put James to death with the sword. Interestingly enough, nothing else in Holy Writ is said about James. Herod put him to death with the sword. He paid the supreme sacrifice. He knew and learned then what it really meant to drink of the cup that Jesus would drink. And uh, whatever else is there to be taught, Holy Scripture is silenced, silent about it. But I add this word that for those who live as the followers of Jesus who devotedly learn the lessons that Jesus had to teach them who experienced certain great moments of spiritual upliftment and devotion in the presence of Jesus who experienced certain transformation in their manner of life from a life of anger and bitterness to a life of love from a life of hope for being seated in the highest place to learn what it is to give humble service and to follow the great, to answer the great challenge that Jesus gave to give themselves entirely in his service, the reward is sure. Doing what you are doing for Jesus requires no earthly reward. But when we meet Jesus face to face, we will hear him say to us, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I have one question for you. Where are you on this journey? We are here celebrating a life of somebody who we say was dedicated to the service of Christ and served in a variety of capacities in church and communi co the community. And we are celebrating her life, giving thanks to God for her. And the question we must face is, where are we on this journey? Have we answered? the initial call? Have we experienced um, moments of transformation, moments of great devotion? Where are we on this journey? And our prayer today is for the church here in Tolgate because she loved this church. I have done, I had the privilege of visiting here in my capacity as Bishop of Mandeville. And indeed, 
had one or two evangelistic missions and other things right here in, in this place. And uh, one does not doubt the care and love she had for him. And our prayer is for the church, St. James Tolkien, its leaders, its members, and indeed the wider community. One leader has departed, but it is part of God's plan to raise up other leaders. I, I'm always a little disturbed when so, somebody says, John Brown is gone, but his place will never be filled. That person has no faith in God because whenever there is a shortage, the Bible is very clear. It says, pray, pray the Lord of the harvest. And he sent forth laborers into his vineyard. So we pray today is an occasion to pray for this church and for its leaders and its members to stand and grow as one of the great stalwarts in our midst has passed on. And our final prayer, of course, today will be the prayer for our departed sister. It comes at the end of funeral services when we have the commendation, when we commend that person into the hands of Almighty God. And today, we will have the privilege to do that. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we say the creed together. Let us with confidence and hope confess the faith into which we were baptized as we say, I, I believe, believe in God, God Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered on the altar of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. For our sister Hortense, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. At the end of the petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and your response will be, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Hortense, and grant the tears of those who weep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister Hortense to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister Hortense to the joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Our sister Hortense was washed in baptism, anointed with the Holy Spirit in confirmation. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. She was nourished with your body and blood in Holy Communion. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Comfort us in on our sorrows and the death of our sister Hortense. Let our faith be our consolation. 
and eternal life, our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Hortense, who was reborn by water and the spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may record to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen.
Chicago. We offer to you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money, but then we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're inviting you now for the next few minutes to engage in an act of worship that our sister was privileged to engage in in this place through the years. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of eternal life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us into your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new life as first fruits of your new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, Remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed St. James, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Remember Hortense. In baptism she died with Christ. May she also share his resurrection. When Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away 
on that day we shall see you, our God, as you are, and we shall become like you and praise you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, from whom all good things do come, with him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, and we say again, blessing and honor, glory and power, be yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so in him we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant her rest. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant her rest. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant her rest eternal. Oh, come, let us
understand it, please. sent to ask us to express our parties for not being here this afternoon and her best wishes to the family and the church. Family and the church.
this year. Yes. God is great. God is great. God is great. So nice to see Richard and Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. So nice to see Richard. Oh, oh yeah, Richard is glad to come out because he likes to be out. I mean, it's COVID thing, you know. Lord God, most holy, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. They want to be out. Yes. From yeah, the bitter I mean, pain of death, you know the secret of our heart in your mercy. Forgive our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Amen. Okay, just, all right, sir. Soon come to you. 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 Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commit to Almighty God our sister Hortense, and we commit our body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and die in your favor. And when your well beloved son shall come again in judgment, this our system and yourself and you know, your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We sing the hymn, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot that has taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sin fill us home, for all my lost hearts are filled with sin. It is well, it is well with.
Abide with me for a thousand years in time. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When all the helpers fail and comfort me, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Abide with me for a thousand
I wish that heaven the visiting hour so I could just show up and bring the news that she's getting old and I wish that you'd met her the things that she'll learn from me I got them all from you I just stay a while and we'll put all the world to rights The little ones will grow and I'll still drink your favorite wine Soon they're going to close but I'll see you another day So much has changed since you've been
Thank you.